Hey world, welcome into my cozy cross-stitch corner of the world. So, first things first. Oh my goodness, my first video I posted about a week ago and I thought, oh, maybe I'd get, you know, a couple hundred people watching it. Maybe, you know, 50 subscribers if I was lucky. You guys blew me away. What? What? Like, my heart, I felt like the Grinch. It grew three sizes this last week. Like, every time somebody would sub and post some wonderful comment about how they loved, you know, my rambling and my stitching, and I was just flabbergasted the whole week. I just, I can't, I can't believe it. So, from the bottom of this Grinch heart, <laughs> that's big. Um, thank you. Thank you so much for just commenting and watching and t just, yeah, like words, they elude me because the emotions is just too much. Like, okay. I start talk about feelings. I can just go on and on about the feels, but, um, I love to live in the feels. But thank you, thank you guys. So I'm back for number two. Hopefully I can keep you guys motivated and interested and and keep it fun. So we'll start out with fully finishes. I worked on the one from this cross stitch magazine, the April spring edition. I think it only comes out four times a year. So it's the spring and it's the all things spring. So I showed you guys, I was just about done with it last, last week and she got a fully finish and, oh, actually let me, well, I'll show you the pillow first. So she's done. Yay. I changed out the white and I did a couple other little different things, just the floss I had on hand, but this is on uh, Even Weave 28 count from Hobby Lobby. I think it's called Ivory, and I finished it in this, the same purple that I finished the little Quaker from last week, so they both have the same finish, and this purple is brought into here. So there's some, some cohesion. I don't know if I want to like do a trim around either of them. I don't have anything in my stash and I, I stopped and looked and I saw maybe a couple things, but they were in white. And I'm like, well, maybe I could dye them like a lavender or something. Cause a lot of the trims out in the regular stores, they are more the, the primary purples. They didn't have a lot of lavenders and uh, it's more pastel. So I might dye it or else I might just go online and find some type of trim that's not around me, but love it. This one, I ended up using the lizard litter instead of this is just the lightweight polyfill. And I like the lizard litter a lot. I like the, the heaviness of it and the depth of it. And it was really easy to fill. Uh, but I could see if I do a lot of pillows, especially like uh, holiday pillows, seasonal pillows that you put away and then you put them in a bin, this gets heavy. So if you have, you know, 20 pillows that you have to put away in a big bin that you have to carry down the stairs. I could see this causing my husband to do it instead of me. Maybe, I think, I don't know if the polyfill, half polyfill, half of the lizard litter, you know, the crushed walnuts works or if it gets bulky or not bulky, but like too clumpy if the the heaviness of this litter, lizard litter like clumps up the polyfill. I don't know. Uh, let me know if you guys do a little of each and not all of the lizard litter. I, I, um, is it the Colorado Stitcher that she had recommended? So this is what I used. 
off Amazon. It's called Zilla, and it's just the Desert Blend Crushed Walnuts. So that is what I bought off of Amazon, and it worked great. I thought, whoa, those little tiny sand, will it come out the sides or anything? But if you use a really small stitch on your sewing machine, you can, um, and I just hand sewed the bottom, and yeah, there's like nothing coming out or anything. So I was a little worried about that, that that would just like those tiny little things would go. So, excuse me, I have a little bit of runny nose. This is my little display. I found this at the dollar spot at Target. It's a little wicker basket. It's like, is the price tag still on? Yeah, it was like, I think five. And these stinking cute geese <laughs> were at the dollar spot too. A geese, okay, do you remember the 1990s geese were like all the rage, especially like in cross-stitch magazines, I look back and I'm like geese everywhere and they're making a comeback. Look at him and his little cute glasses. I saw him, I had a, I had a swoop up and I think they were only like three bucks. So he, they are adorning, adorning my little spring bouquet and these little carrots were clearanced out at Walmart. Uh, just recently after Easter, I just picked them up this week. So I just threw a couple in there. Um, but yeah, it makes a really cute little display. Like, hello spring. And this could be a ball spring. Oh, my cuckoo clock. I forgot to shut the door. Um, so there we go. Very cute. So that was my first and only fully finished. And my only finish... I did start a new project, so I went thrift shopping, and I hit the mother load of cross stitch. Like that doesn't ever happen. I go into a thrift store, and there's always tons of quilting books or crochet or knitting, but very rarely do I find any cross stitch stuff. Uh, but I came across this little Mill Hill kit. It was marked for fifty cents. Had all the beads in there, and. It was all just waiting for me to go home and start. I've never beaded anything. This was my first experience with beading. And there is um, a chart that I want to start later this fall. That ha It's a girl. Uh, I think it's one of the Nora Corbett's. Not the big Mirabila, but the smaller ones that I want to do. So I'm like, oh, this would be a perfect little thing to start practicing beading on before I try to tackle the big girl. So... This was actually from like 1993. It's called Snow Crystals. I don't think they make it anymore, but I mean, Mill Hill, Mill Hill, did I say Mill House? Mill Hill has lots of little kits that you can do, but just really a pretty one. So I came home and started that instead of starting the bunny one that I talked about last week. And let me put this on the little board. Well, not little board, but look at how pretty and shiny that is it is so fun is it catching the light hopefully it is my big old man hands <laughs> that aren't painted or any pretty but all right there oh it's so pretty I got pretty much almost done and it was like one in the morning and I'm like, oh, my eyes are getting tired and I had to get to bed. And so just one more quick evening and it'll be finished up. And right now I just threw the beads in the little cup, but I can see that, you know, becoming a, a disaster if one of my animals jumps up on me. So let me know what, if you guys do a lot of beading, what's the easiest way to work with beads? Um... So, yeah, love the beading. And then also at the thrift store, while we're talking about it, I found that kit and some magazines. And they were like 50, marked down to 50 cents. And this one is from 1997. And there, there, I got a, quite a few of them. And some of the stuff in the magazines did not age well. Like, look very dated and something I wouldn't stitch but throughout these magazines there's at least like one or two that are really really cute and this sampler up front is really cute 
I'm I would totally stitch that that little house. Um, I think it's right here in the beginning. Uh, yeah. Look at there's a little dog. I love the colors. So pretty. So it, I know so many of you guys that had posted have been cross stitching for decades. So you guys might have some of these sitting on your shelf. This is the Better Homes and Garden, February edition, 1997. And this pillow right there is gorgeous. It's, I think I will be finding myself beating that. It's a beaded cushion, but look at how pretty that is. Yeah, the the tassels, you know, that's a little more dated and, you, you know, that fringe. But if you imagine it with nothing or, you know, more uh, contemporary updated trim that we have, chenille around that, are so pretty, those morning glories. I love them. So, yeah, for 50 cents, I found two perfect little charts in there that definitely will do it and then one more or actually two more this quickly this cross stitch um in country crafts look at that cool sampler up front it's for mother's day uh but the blue work on there and each little motif really cute really cute and even like you know you could just pull out one or mix and match and that's the great thing about some of these magazines even if you don't like like a whole like sampler or a whole image you could take bits and pieces of a flower or something and incorporate it in something because that's eventually what I want to do with some of my things is you know maybe take a bird or take like a motif or a flower and then combine it like different ones and mishmash and make my own thing too eventually I mean right now I'm just want to get used to somebody else's designs and learn and then one more quick one. Oh, so this one was from 1986. January, February edition of 1986. Wow. I was uh, 14. Yeah, I was in eighth grade. They could have us cool. And then another Better Homes and Garden. Cross stitch and needlework. This one was from... Hmm. Oh, there it is in February of 1998. But that is a really cute little Valentine's that could do in red or pinks. That's really cute. So I know so many of you guys have some of these magazines sitting on your, on your shelves, or if you're garage sailing, don't sleep on them. There, there's some interesting ones from the eighties and nineties that I'm like, Oh, cute. So that was um, some of the cute ones. And then one more complete guide to needlework. This was a dollar for this big thick book. So I haven't really sat down and gone through it, but they, it's just jam packed with stuff. So I'm a visual learner and I do love watching YouTube, but once in a while I, you know, when you're reading through a book too, it's so easy to pick up some information and use it too so those were some of the finds I found at the thrift store along with that snow hill one I started now uh, my works in progress I did not stitch as much this week because one you guys bought all my uh project bags from my Etsy shop and so I wanted to work on more sorry hold on little snot nose kid. I wanted to work on more to get to my shop stocked up a few more for you guys because I was just, what a reception that you guys just bought them all and loved them. And so thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you again uh, for that. And so I, I felt so bad. I, I wish I could just make so many a day but they take you know they take time and so I can only whip out a you know a couple a day here and there and so maybe my goal is like 10 a week I can get up on my shop so just be patient 
If you see something you'd love, you can always email me and let me know if you want a custom order that I can work on. And, but you know, just, I'll, I'll try to post as many as I can and, and hopefully continue that there's something that you guys like. So thank you. So that being said, I did not have as much stitchy time as I usually do because of the sewing time, but I still got stuff in. And what I did this week was I let Siri pick my whips. So every morning I'd roll out of bed and I'd be like, hey Siri, I can't say it loud because she's probably listening. Pick a number, one through 20, and then she would tell me. And so I would work on what she picked. Or actually, it's a he, I have a guy. What he would say, um, but now I'm down to 19 whips. And so I'll show you what I worked on. First one is I'm in the Teresa Colgate uh, Patreon and she's doing a, like a two year sale. It's called Hometown and each month on the 15th she releases a little bit of the new mystery sale. So this is what it is. It's a lot of buildings which uh, are really fun to just fill in and they go so quickly. There's not a lot of thinking and counting and it's just easy it's easy work and so it's on 40 count fox and rabbit up in the attic and it's going to be two years so i just started working on marches yeah so i have till april 15th to finish this section so i'm about uh well not quite halfway but it won't take long so really really pretty Teresa Colgett I love I love all her stuff I her stuff is so pretty so that is my first whip and then, so my next project that I was working on is also from Teresa Colgett it is love is the key and look at those bunnies and that big huge flower so cute so this was kind of represent my husband and I. Love is the key. Because, yeah, if you don't have love, what you got? An unhappy marriage? <laughs> okay, so. Uh, there it is. Look at the bunny. How cute is she? And that flower. So first try round, my border matched up perfectly, which, yeah, I was on pins and needles. I was like making my way around. I'm like, oh, please, please, please. Because, yeah, learning 40 count, you, you could just be off one little tiny thing and it's like, bam, you're struggling. So this is on... Picture This Plus Ren. Is it Picture This Plus? Yeah, PTP. Picture This Plus Ren. Love that fabric. Love the, the colors. So far, it's been, I think, one of my favorite color-wise that I've, I personally have had. But, I mean, I don't have... I haven't had experience with many. There's so many gorgeous ones out there. So that is that. My next call that Siri told me to do was, it's snow time. I bought this, I think it was either the same day I bought the bunny, the jackrabbit, or like one other time I'd gone back. It was really early in my career. And so this is Cottage Garden Samplings, snow time. And I think it's the first one, number one out of here. Yeah, series. It's a time for all season series. So because I was so new and I'm like, oh, the snowman doesn't show up that much. And I'm like, ah, maybe I want more contrast, even though I think it's gorgeous, kind of tone on tone. But I was worried that the, the white wasn't going to show up. And even around the border it's it's hard to see so I ended up picking a darker color and I don't know if I love it 
Every time I, I work on it, I'm like, ah, oh, I don't know. Does this work? Does this not work? So I ended up picking this blue. Um, it is Lugana, and it's a Hobby Lobby 25 count Lugana. And I really love the, the white and the blue and the red and the blue and the yellow and the blue. But that kind of maroon and the gold, I don't know if it uh, works. But I think once I get more of his body and the white around, I think it'll be fine. But it's not my favorite. And so I've, I've struggled working on it. But it's called Steel Blue Lugana. It's pretty, I always, I want to always want to call it a blue steel, like from, um, Zoolander, the blue steel. If you know, you know. <laughs> oh, great. Now I'm going to have that duck face out there in the world. So, all right. What do you guys think? Eh, does it work? It's fine. I'm not going to rip it out or start over anything, but yeah, you know how when you start something, you just him and Han and you're like, I don't love it. And then you don't find yourself working it on it as much. And so, but it'll get done. It will. Just plug it away. Which was nice that Siri told me to work on it because I haven't been motivated. So it's nice to have somebody kick me in the butt. And then she also, or he also told me to work on Margaret Beatty. I showed, Beatty Beatty, I showed this last week. And I worked on that for a few hours. I didn't get much done. I think last week I just had into that line motif, the red one. So I did the alphabet, the lowercase alphabet, and this motif. So I think I just worked on it for maybe an hour or two. But I really am excited to get her done. Get down into there. So, and this is on that Joanne Fabric linen, which I thought was cotton linen mix, but really, um, that somebody had asked me in the questions, in my comments, if they could get a skew, and I happened to be at Joanne's at that moment when she asked, and so I got the skew for it, and I, uh, well, oh, I even, I haven't memorized, it's, 6901-250. How I remember that because I can't even remember my own name half the time. But that's the skew that comes in lots of different colors. Um, but it's not cotton linen. It's a viscose. A viscose linen combo. And I think it's 50%, 15% linen. And viscose, I looked up, I'm like, what is viscose? I've, I've heard it and seen it on tags, but it's a it's a type of rayon that's used from wood pulp from trees. So uh, it gives a really nice, and it's supposed to imitate silk. So it gives a really nice drapey, soft finish to clothing. Uh, so that is my other whip. And one last work in progress that they called was the January Prairie Schooler. I started this in December, hoping that it'd be ready for January. And <laughs> oh, so green! Well, you, uh, the newbie stitcher in me is like, oh, I could whip that out in a week. I didn't realize how it was stitching is so slow and time consuming. I'm thinking, well, that's not that big. And then you get in there and you start doing it. I have a whole new appreciation for all the, the people that for years that have been stitching and stitching and all the little X's that we've done over the years. Like, wow. You just don't believe how much work goes into some of those things. Like even, you know, when I've quilt and stuff, people are like, oh, you could whip me up a quilt. Could you make me a quick quilt? I'm like, quick and quilt don't go together. Quick and cross-stitch don't go together. So, uh, yeah, it's just everybody always, I shouldn't say everybody. So many people just think if they don't do it, they don't really know how much time and effort goes into all the handmade things that we do. Um, so, yeah, it's like being a hairstylist my whole life, too. I'd be over at a peop someone's house, a friend's house, and somebody would be like, oh, you cut hair? Can you just give me a quick cut? I'm like, 
we're at a dinner party. I'm not going to just go whip out some scissors and give a quick cut. It's like, you know, if a plumber came to my house and we're at a dinner party, I'd be like, oh, my toilet's got a little leak. You want to just do a quick little, you know, fix on my toilet? Like, uh, I don't, don't get me started. Anyhow, <laughs> January, back to the January thing. There it is. This is on 40 count lamb's wool. I got off one, two, three stitch. It's, it's much more stiff. Um, and at first I didn't like it at all. I'm like, Oh, that's kind of stiff and scratchy, but I don't mind it anymore. I work in a hoop. Um, you can kind of just see the little bit and it, the stiffer stuff does stay more taut in your hoop, even if you're like cranked down because some of the soft stuff, it's, um, seems, you know, it has a much more bounce. So then when you're even tightening down, I find myself having to pull tight throughout, you know, just the pressure on your hands, push it down. So this stays a lot tighter in the hoop, which is nice to work on. Um, but yeah, I do eventually would love to get all the months done. That's kind of my long-term goal. It might take a few years, but if I just work, you know, a month here and there, a month every year or two, by the time I'm 100, I'll have them all done. So, yeah. And what, like, I don't know if you can see, but it's a lot more see-through, too. Like, the holes are bigger on this 40 count, which, and it seemed more uneven. So, at first, it was, like, really a struggle to work on it, but you get used to it. Like, everything, your eyes and the... I think the repetition and it's like, um, like riding a bike that you just don't have to concentrate anymore about how to pedal and how to keep your balance. It's just, what's that Me memory muscle? Yeah. Memory muscle that. So, all right. So those are my, my projects that I got to work on. And I decided this week Instead of spreading myself thin and working on a bunch of different projects like I always do, and then I feel like I never really get anywhere on one particular project because I just keep, you know, rotating, I'm going to test out working on one project this week and just see how far I get. And so I'm going to have Siri pick my project right now. And then we will pull it out and I'll show you where I'm at. And then we can see how far I get in one week's worth of stitching and not stitching on anything else. If it's a project that's like almost done, which I don't have that many, but if I finish, then I can work on something else other than the hometown. I have to kind of work on till I want to keep up on that. But all right, let's see what Siri has to say. Pick a number one through 19. It's 16. Ooh, 16. Sweet 16. All right, let's me look at my chart. Um, I keep track of a lot of my stuff in this book. Um, I don't, because I'm an avid uh, fountain pen collector. I love fountain pens. And so many notebooks and planners are not um, the fountain pen friendly. Everything just bleeds. So there's very few... Um, journals and books that I can get that are that I can use all my fountain pens. Hobonichi makes one that I've used. I love that. And this one is from Sterling Ink. It's just a really pretty, um, it's called a common planner. It's got gold on it and gold and it's the pages are super like thin, like feels like Bible material, but it does not bleed. So I'll just keep track of what I do for the week. You can see, I'll do stickers and it's also my personal journal too. So it's a little of everything in there. Yeah. Like daily, I could just, it's got a section for, you know, journaling, journaling, but anyhow, here's my whips. So number 16 is <gasps> echoes of a garden or echoes of a garden past. Oh, fun. So she's going to be getting lots of work on. Let's bring her out. Oh, you guys saw her last week, and so she didn't have anything. Is it, it might be in this bag. Let's see. Yeah, because 
I used a girl and she's got a girl in there. So this is one of the little bags I'd made a while back for myself. So, all right, we'll recap to what, how much is left or how much I can start out with. All right. So there's my Echoes of a Garden Past. Did not get any work, and so let's see how much I can do in a week. So my plan last time was to go down and over into the grass. So there's, for people who did not see last week, this is that. So I am right here. So yeah. I bet you it will not look like much because it is so densely stitched. So I'll be like seven days of, of green grass and I've got four inches. So it'll be interesting to see. So that'll be fun to see my progress in one week. And, and then you guys hold me accountable for actually working on it. Like sometimes you have to just say things out loud and, uh, tell somebody your your goals so then they're like oh remember what you said and you're like oh yeah uh so i had um a comment that i had uh a bunting i think that's what it's called back there that they wanted to see and so i took it down oh now it's um show and tell time crochet and quilting so all the stitching the stitching's done so this is the little bunting. It's all machine embroidered and it's, I just kind of did it and then put some backing and pinked the edges and then threw some lace across the top. So it's kind of a circus theme, the girl in the ring, the lion, the two headed bunny <laughs> with balloon. So lo I love these designs. If you want these on a project bag, let me know. A bunny that's on a unicycle. And then a two-headed girl. Yeah, so fun. So, yeah, that just hangs back there for fun. Liven up the space. I did that, oh probably 10 years ago. I've had that done for a long time, but it's fun. Oh, since we're on sewing, I pulled out my very, one of my very first quilts I ever did. My very first quilt I ever made fell apart. I didn't know that, you know, you had to like quilt. <laughs> I just like pieced it and put the batting and the other thing and put um, binding around it. And then it like clumped up and then the, um, stitches started falling out and it was this butterfly quilt and I just ended up throwing it away because I washed it a couple times and every time I'd pull it out of the wash it was just like rip more rip more I'd mend it and I'm like okay you're going in the garbage I kind of wish I would have saved it just to like look back at how far I've come like we we should just save some of the, our very first things and even though we're embarrassed at how they look or, you know, they're not up to our standards now, it just shows how much you've come and how far and how much better you are. So it's just a reminder that it just practice. Practice makes perfect. So it's also an embroidered quilt and it's Raggedy Ann and Andy. It was on a CD. It's from 2001. So we're talking, this quilt is almost 25 years old and the designs are just adorable. I love Raggedy Ann and Andy stuff. And the funny thing is I did this in anticipation of having a child and I wanted boy girl twins. This, you know, our big dreams. I wanted boy girl twins and I was going to decorate the whole room. The one side with the girls, you know, Raggedy Ann and then the other side, the boy Raggedy Andy. Yeah. So... I had one kid, one girl, and I didn't even do any of her room in Raggedy Ann and Andy at that time. Um, I just did it like pink and some other stuff. And um, so, yeah, funny how we have certain plans. And then when, when the time comes, you're like, yeah, I'm not feeling that anymore. 
So this is my quilt. I will back up and try to show you all of it. So the Raggedy Ann, and then I was like messing around with embroidery. I did some hearts up there. You could see it better. I started it like, and then I'm like, oh my gosh, that's a lot of work. So I just did it across the top. I was going to do the whole border, but I gave up. So I just kind of did some stitching in the ditch around the motifs. But yeah so fun that the colors and I did do some like fun decorative stitching in here with the stars and but I was just kind of learning it's all like wonky and not perfect but it's my very first one and it's just like a little lap smaller lap quilt it's not very big I'm like five six and it comes up to my neck or so but and then the back is just red white gingham and the binding oh interesting huh I put this decorative stitch all around the binding I was really I was really working the decorative stitches how fun and yeah I, I didn't know how to miter at that time either so I just kind of folded it over and put it in there so funny. Oh, I haven't looked at this quilt for years. It's just been folded up. But it's one of my favorite quilts because of the Raggedy Ann and Andy. And I've had it for so long. I just, I cherish this. It's like something that will never, I'll never part with that one. So if you want any Raggedy Ann and Andy designs, hopefully right now I cannot get at them because it came on a CD and I have the CD, but I do not have a laptop that has CD players anymore. Like, and I bought an external CD player and I can't, I don't have the program in my new computer. So I need to find somebody who can just get this CD onto, you know, like um, a stick to put into my computer. So maybe down the road I will have some Raggedy Ann and Andy designs but right now they're stuck on a CD technology I wish it's constantly changing and then you get left in the dust with old stuff like I still have floppy disks laying around the house with you know photos on them oh all right and crochet so I did not do any crocheting this week but I pulled down one of my amigurumis and because Easter's just over, I have a bunny to show. Because, yeah, bunnies. <laughs> He's so cute. Uh, this is from one of my favorite um, Amigurumi designers. Her name is Jan Schenkel. And it's from the Animal Friends of Pika Pau 3. She has three books. This is the third one. I don't have book one and two. I definitely will get that eventually for my my um library but yeah so many cute things in there Jan Schenkel Friends of Peekapaw 3 and there you can see the bunny right on the the cover and what what I love about her designs are they start out like like a little bit easier in the beginning and then there's some more advanced ones in the, the back like there's there's his picture. I really, really want to do this adorable mouse. Look at her in her little dress. Yeah, she's she's on my list of ones I want to do. And it's he's really cute. Like his overalls, they come come off, so you can you could change out his overalls, and then even the same I could change out um, instead of making pants and dividing that up just make a skirt and it could be girl bunny in two seconds and change out the colors and make a little skirt for her but yeah there's there's the bunny in all his little glory he's pretty good size I'd say that's more than 12 inches and depending on your hook size and what type of yarn you use this is worsted weight uh so it's like a 
a four. And I use, usually with a worsted weight fours with amigurumi, uh, I use like a three and a half millimeter hook, 3.75 sometimes. So if you used a, a thinner weight yarn, like a DK and used like a two and a half hook, you can make them a lot smaller. They stitch up exactly the same, just smaller or bigger, depending. But with amigurumi, you never use what's on the back of the label of the yarn recommendation because you'll have the holes will be too holy and you'll be able to see the all the stuffing through them so you always want to go down at least two maybe even three hook sizes depending on the yarn and how you like it I always just do testing but yeah for people who want to learn amigurumi there's so many great youtubers out there that will show you and walk you through, like I said. But one of my favorites is, um, uh, she it was used to be called a, a French name. Oh no, now I just forgot her name. Elise, Elise something, Elise Rose. Oh, oh shoot, I'll put it down in the thing. See, I could remember 2901-250 or 69 but a name mm. it's so random how there's just things that you can remember stupid random facts like the ram in my brain just, just like small and it'll dump like important information and then it keeps like useless facts that like how many feet are in a mile what 5,820 feet in a mile why why do I know that <laughs> so there's that and I think that wraps it up for my show and tell and all my things I'm just trying to think I did um I did work on some bags for my shop and I'm restocking so and if they're gone I will always keep working on a restock so thank you again and, oh, you know what I wanted to do? Because of all you guys that have, let me grab it really quickly. All you guys worked, like, full-time commenting on my videos, subscribing to my channel. I want to do a, a giveaway because I want to thank you guys for just welcoming in, me into this community with such open arms and... So yeah, I want to do something for you guys. So I'm going to give away the Jackrabbit, my very first one. I'm not planning on ever stitching him again, and I'd rather him go to somebody who wants to do him um, and pass on the fun time that he was. It's real fun right in there. Um, but yeah, so the... Just, you have to be 18, I guess, so for me to legally get your your um, address. And um, probably stick to the United States. I'm sorry for you for foreign watching people. Maybe down the road, once I get used to sending stuff out, um, you know, this could be a pretty lightweight and send. But for now, I'm just going to stick with U.S. only, 18 and over. And in the comments write the word bunny and I will just randomly have the random picker pick somebody and I'll let you guys know um, by next floss tube who won so you know I plan on uploading videos within two weeks like between one and two weeks like 10 ish days that gives me enough time to stitch and have some content for you guys uh, so uh, yeah, let's, let's shoot for one week from today, which is April 4th. I think it's the 4th today. So, well, let's just, is that, it's, let's do tax day. Um, have your, your submissions in by tax day. <laughs> womp, womp, womp. If you have to pay the government, maybe you end up winning something like, make tax day a little easier. So yeah, it'll be open until then. So leave a comment for Bunny and 
thank you guys again for such the warm welcome and watching me and yeah you and responding like I love all the comments in there like getting to know you guys and what you guys like to stitch and what makes you guys happy that's just so much fun so thank you thank you bye bye